All right, hell yeah. So this is a practice math test for SAT. All right, first question. We got 115 questions. Let's see how many we, we can do. Average arithmetic mean. Thank God I actually looked this one up in a book today. Didn't look it up. It just came across it. It's like if you got 2 plus 4, the mean is you add 2 plus 4 divided by 2, that you get 6 divided by you get 3, which is right in between 2 and 4. So if you got three of these, you got to add them all up, divide by three. So you got four plus seven. Seven plus three is uh, ten, so it's eleven. And minus eight. Well, ten minus eleven. Eleven minus eight is three. Okay, so you're going to have three x divided by three. So you're going to have x. So it's got to be one of these two. Now for these, you're going to add these up. Five, my, five plus two. 7 minus 6, 1. 1 divided by 3. Okay, so there you go. There's your answer. Next. And uh, in a classroom, 35 students, 14 are male. What percent of the classroom is male? Well, l l let's just say it was uh, 30, 15. If it was, if it was 15, 16, if it was 17.5, it would be 50%. Uh, if it was 17.5, but it's not, it's 40%, you know what I mean? I mean, it's not 30%, because if it was 30%, you would have, uh, if you had 30 students, you'd have 10 that were male. That would be 30%, but you got 14. Well, you know what I mean? If you, if you had 33 students, you would have 11 that were male, you know what I mean? So it's 40, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know why, but I just do. Okay, there you go. So if the area of a triangle is 24, okay, cool, cool, and its base is 6, what is the length of the altitude to the base? Okay, so yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, and it's, so you got a base of 6, times another number is 24, but not really. 6 times another number is uh, 12. You know what I mean? 6. No, no, no. How does that work out? Uh, okay, because the area of a rectangle. So if you had this as your area of a rectangle, this would be uh, 24. Well, the area of a square would be 48. So you you're saying you have an so 6 6 times something is 48 uh 6 times 8 is 48 there you go i i think i think you saw what i did there okay lenny's average score after 3 tests is 88 good job lenny uh what score on the fourth test would bring lenny's average up to 90 oh okay I don't know why I said it like that, but, uh, uh, okay. Um, because I did, I don't have a friggin' clue. That, that's all I'm getting at. Um, so anyway. Oh, it's the same thing, you know what I mean? It, uh, so, uh, hmm. Uh, you gotta go 88 plus 88 plus 88 plus 90. And then divide that crap by 4. No, no, no. It's 88 plus 88 plus 88 plus another number divided by 4 has to equal 90. Uh, well, what's 88 divided by 4? It's 22 plus 22 plus 22. Okay, so uh, that's 3 tests, 22. 3 times 22 is 66. I think, I think we're on to something. I think we're on to something. Uh, 66, that's 24. And then we got to go, uh, 24 times, uh, 4. I think that's it. 24 times 4. I think I was a little bit off. I don't want to think about this one ever again in my whole life. Uh, 24 times 4. Well, it's like 100, but minus 4. 96. All right, hell yeah, we got that one. Next, next, next. That one is awful. Uh, if an integer is divisible by 6, divisible by 6. So it's got to be 6 or 12. 
18, 24, 36. Okay, hell yeah. And by 9, what's the first one? 18. Then the, then the integer must be divisible by which of the following? 18. Uh, if an integer is divisible by 9, 6, and by 9, I don't know. It is just, this is just the lowest one I can think of, you know what I mean? Because it can't be 12. 12 is not divisible by 9. This one is, though. I'm just going to move on. I don't like that one either. Uh, the equation x squared minus 5x plus 4 has how many distinct real solutions? x squared plus 5x plus 4. Zero. Because it's just sky high. It's, you're already, it's, it's, it's x squared plus 5x plus 4. It just has no solutions. You know, it, it's way above the x-axis. You throw in, you throw in 1 and you just get, you know, you throw in 1 and you can't, nah, you, you could throw in negative 1. And then you would have, uh, oh, 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 oh. No, th this has probably got some solutions. Oh, yeah, because it's x squared minus 5x. Yeah, you, you throw in negative 1 here, you're going to have negative 5. You throw in 1 here, you're going to have 5 minus 4 um, is 1. Yeah, there you go. So you throw in one here. What if throw in negative one? I, I, I don't know. I'm just going to say two. Because unless zero is a solution, if zero is not a solution, um, then it's got two. There you go. Next, 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 next. Uh, a certain machine can make three widgets. Is that right? Yeah, if a parabolic comes down and it just just touches the it's, it's, so it's zero has to be a solution. Well, no, y is equal to zero. Eh, yeah, I don't know. It could have just had one. It could have just had one. I don't care though. Uh, a certain machine can make three widgets every two seconds. That's good for that machine. At this rate, how many widgets will be made in one minute? Uh, it's going to make three widgets, oh, every two seconds. Uh -huh. See, that's a tricky. So, yeah, let's say if it made three widgets every one second, uh, you'd do three times 60, but you don't. You do three times 30. It's 90. Okay, hell yeah, moving on, moving on. Uh, if x plus y is less than 10, and x minus y is greater than 12, which of the following pairs could be the value of x and y? Okay, uh, less than 10. Uh, eh, less than 10. Less than 10. Now, this is, yeah, they're all less than 10. Okay, cool, cool, cool. How about this one? X minus Y is greater than 12. Not greater than 12. 6 plus 4. Hey, that's not greater than 12. Uh, this isn't greater than 12. 10 minus 2 is not greater than 12. 10 plus 2 is not greater than 12. 8 plus 6, I think this is it. I didn't see this one. Yeah, because it's going to be 14. Hell yeah, moving on. If the positive integer x leaves a remainder of 2 when divided by 8. Okay, so you're going to be like, uh, I don't know what we're going to be. Uh, what will be the remainder when x plus 9 is divided by 8? Okay, so if you have something like 10, and you divide 10 by 8, you... No, no, no. No, no, no. We're, we're talking a remainder of 2. Is, well, I don't even know how a remainder works. Oh, this is a bummer. No, I, I, th I think we're I think we're chill. Like you would have like the number ten divided by eight, and then you have a remainder of two or something.
Yeah, because it, 10 divided by 8 is 1, but you got a remainder of 2. Cool. And then if you got 19 uh, divided, yeah, because 10 plus 9, so you got 19 divided by 8. Well, you're going to have 6 plus 19. 6, 16, 16. 17, 8, 9. You're going to have 3. Remainder of 3. Hell yeah. There you go. Okay, next. And I, I, I don't know if any of these are right, you know what I mean? Don't take it. We'll, we'll see at the end. If the triangle above is the measure of angle B. Oh. It, oh, the me Okay, you got 52 right here. Cool. Then what is the value of Y? Oh, okay. So this one, they all have to be 180. 52, so now we need to solve for x. So 2x plus 2 is equal to 52. 52 minus 2 is 50. Divided by 2 is 25. So that we, we, And then this is uh, 25 times 4 is 100. 152. Let's say it was 150. This one would be 30, but it's not. It's 28. Booyah, 100, 180 in a circle. 180 in a, in a triangle. All right, that was my elbow. Okay, if 6% of X is 7.5, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 because well, let's say you had 100. Let's say you had 100, and you're taking 6% of 100. Well, you'd get 6. So it's got to be like 125 or something. It's got to be like 100. Oh, 1.5. It's got to be 125. Because if you, if you had 100, and you took 6% of it, you'd get 6. But if you just had 25, uh, no, that, if you had 50, you'd get 3. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you had, if you had 25, you'd get, uh, 1.5. So it's 125. Then 36% of 125, well, you'd, you'd get, uh, you'd get 36 plus, uh, plus, uh, What's half of this? Well, that's going to be 15, 16, so 18, 9. 36 plus 9. I'm so bad at this. Because that's, that's 4. That's like 5. It's 45. Okay, there you go. Booyah. Next. In a downtown building, there are 6 floors. That's my elbow. There are 6 floors, and the number of rooms on each floor is R. If each room has exactly C chairs, which of the following is the number of chairs in the building? There are six floors. Oh, the number of rooms on each floor is R. Okay, so six times R is uh, the number of rooms. Six floors. Six floors, uh, no, no, there's six, and the number of rooms on each floor is R. Oh, so it could be 10. So you could have 60 rooms. So, uh, six times 10 is six, the rooms. If each room has exactly C chairs, yeah, it's this one. You got a, you got 60 rooms times another 10 chairs per room. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the, okay, that was. That was crazy. Okay, next one. Uh, whoa, it seemed like it skipped, but it didn't. In a pentagon, each side is one centimeter. Oh, I can do. You just guess. See, look at this. So this is. It's about area is about one. But you know what I mean. Add up all those. It's going to be like one point five. Okay. If a particle starts at point. Oh man, they didn't even want even the area of it. Okay, so we started a particle. Okay, whatever. Uh, clockwise. Uh, 100, 183 centimeters. Oh. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then 100, 100 divided by 5 is 20. 80 divided by 5. 80 divided by 10 is 8, so it's 40. 100 divided by, no, 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 80 divided by 10 is 8. 
80 divided by 5 is 16. So you're going to have 20 plus 16. Oh, I, I don't know. You're just going to go three more. A, B, C, D, D. Duh. Okay, that was dumb. I don't know what I was solving. Um, what is the greatest prime factor of 77? Well, you know what I mean? Oh, 11. Oh, thank God. Yeah, there you go. Because it's 7 times 11. And both those are primes, so they can't be primed out anymore. Anyway, next. A business is owned by nine women and a man, each of whom owns an equal share. All right, so we got ten little shares. If one of the women sells half of her share to the man, oh, okay. So now, now, now you have ten equal shares. Eight, eight of the women don't do nothing, so they're just one tenth, point one, point one. But then you have, uh, so that's point eight. You know what I mean? Eight eight shares of point one is point eight, uh, and then and then, but but one of the point one per so the point one one of the woman had point one. She's gonna have point zero five, um, and she's gonna give it to the man, which is now going to have point 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 one plus point one five point one five. Okay. And another woman keeps one-fifth of her share. If one of the women sells half her share to the man, and another woman keeps a fifth of her share and sells the rest to the man. So this is right. Okay, so, so we, we got that first part. Guy's going to have uh, 0.15. And uh, 0.15. Uh, 0.15. Can I say that? That's 15 divided by 100. I need to write this down. Okay, but then another woman keeps a fifth of her share. So point one. So you have you have a point one per you have a ten percent ten percent. This is ten ten percent, and uh, she's going to keep. And you got to divvy divvy up ten ten into uh, into uh, five five parts. So it's going to be two parts. She gets she gets two percent, and then the guy gets eight percent. So you get point, the guy gets 0.15 plus 0 0.08, which is like kind of 0.25, but it's 2 less, so it's 0.23. So it's 23 divided by 100. Holy Toledo. That was a good one. I like that one. Uh, at a bedding convention, 400 dealers sold either blankets or sheets or both. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Blanket, sheets, or both. This, they could be equally distributed. If 163 dealers sold both, and 117 dealers sold only blankets, how many? At betting, 400 dealers sold either blankets or sheets or both. I hate this one. If 163 dealers sold both blankets and sheets, 117 just sold blankets, how many dealers sold sheets? Oh, I like it. Because it says how many dealers sold only, yes, so, oh, so sold only sheets. Perfect. Sold both. Can you sell, can you sell only both? You know what I mean? Um, 400 dealers sold either, uh, it seems like a total trick, but I don't think so. Okay, just add these together, so you're going to get 10, so that's going to bump this up to 7, 8, 280, 280, and that's almost 300, 120. I hate it, I don't like that problem, I think it's a trick. For all values of x, 3x plus 4, 4x minus 3. Oh, we just got to, so you're going to get 12x squared. And then you're going to uh, add, not, no, so you're going to add, uh, add, add 16 minus 9. 16 
minus 9 is 5x. So it's a 12x squared, 12x squared, uh, minus 9 plus 4. So uh, plus 5x, why isn't 5x on here? Minus 12. What are they doing to me? Holy Toledo. Kidding. Uh, so 3 times 4 is 12. 12x squared. Um, minus 9. Oh, minus 9x. Yeah, yeah, we did it. Yeah, minus 9x plus 16x. Minus 9x plus 16x. Oh, whoa, 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 that's 7. Yeah, holy, it's 16 minus 5. 16 minus 9 is 7. There you go. This is one. Whew. Had a typo in my brain. Okay, Steve types an average rate of 8 pages. That was a little Freudian. I, I said typo, and it just says type right there. So I must have just saw that. Out of just corner of my eye. Steve types at an average rate of eight pages per hour. That sounds boring. Okay. Uh, at that rate, how many hours will it take Steve to type a hundred pages? Ooh. Let's say, let's say he's got to type eighty pages. It'll take him uh, ten hours. Okay. So it's got to be more than that. And he can type a uh, hundred eighty uh, twenty four eight. That's three more. He needs three more hours. So a after after ten hours, he needs three more. But he'll have a surplus. So it's just this. You know what I mean? Because he could type a. Uh, it, it would take him. He could type a hundred and four pages. Yeah, that's that's where the half comes in. Okay, sweet. We got that one. I like that one. All right. So, uh, oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Cannot equal, cannot equal zero. Okay. Which of the following expressions describes the identical values in the number line above? Oh, we're going to have the absolute value of, uh, um, oh, x. The absolute value of x, because if you have negative 2, is always greater than or equal to 1. Yep, there you go. x, x, 2 is going to be greater than uh, 1. Yep, and negative 2, absolute value is, yeah, it's greater than 1. All right, I'm, I'm about tired. Okay, and we got like another 100 of these problems to do. In the sequence, 4. Okay, got it, got it. Uh, what is the most likely value of x? In the sequence, 4, 12, 36, x, 324. Well, I, what? I don't get it. Oh, 4, 12, 36, x, and then 324. Well, y you multiplied by 3, multiplied by 3. Multiplied by 3. So you're going to have 90 plus uh, 18. 108. Booyah. That, that was an IQ problem. Okay, if... Uh, and i got to get this just a little bit lower. There we go. If Jeff and Jimmy have less than $22... Oh, they have less than $22 between them. And Jeff has $8. Which of the following could be the number of dollars that Jimmy has? Well, if it equals to 22, he can't have that because he has less. Okay, so uh, 8, 10 plus something equals 22. That's 12, so it's 14. Um, it's got to be 12. There you go. Next, I like those. Greater than, equal to. First, always equalize it and, and then figure out the greater than, equal. Okay, Stephanie drove an average rate, 150, no, 50 miles per hour for two hours. Sounds like she went 100 miles. And then increased her average rate by 50% over the next three hours. Okay, 
Um, so over three hours, she now is going 75 miles an hour. Got it, got it. And uh, her average rate of, of speed for the five hours... Oh, okay. He, so it, it's linear. I don't want to confuse myself, but you got to take the halfway point between 50 and uh, 50 miles per hour rate by increased or average rate by 50 percent. Yeah, so you're going to go 50 to uh, 75. And what's the halfway point between 50 and 70? That's why I don't like it. It just it, it makes it makes less sense. But you're going to take the halfway point between 50 and 75. And that's going to be your, your average speed for three hours. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... Uh, uh, I don't like this one either. But anyway, so yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can just guess. So 50, halfway between 50 and 70 is 60. It's going to be like 62.5. 62.5 plus 50. So, uh, but you're only going to go 50 for two. And then, and then, uh, oh man. Yeah, so uh, she, she, she went to uh, 62.5 for three hours. Uh, so uh, if it was, if it was, Halfway between 62.5 and 50, it would be like 55. Okay, but it's going to be more than that because she went three hours at 62.5. So it's got to be more than 55. Um, so I'm just going to, the only one more than 55 is 60. And uh, there you go. So yeah, it, it just probably just pops out to be 60. But it's going to be closer to 55 because, does that make sense? Let's talk through that. So, uh, for that second, for those three hours, her average speed was some halfway between 50 and 75 miles per hour. So, that's 60, uh, 75 miles per hour. Yeah, yeah. If it's 50 to 70, that's 60. But she was going 62.5 miles per hour. So, that's going to be her average. So let's say it just was 60 miles per hour. Uh, and then she only drove for two hours. So she drove two hours at 60 miles an hour, and then two hour, and then two hours at 50 miles per hour. Well, sounds like her average speed is going to be 55, which would be right here. But she went three hours at 62.5 miles per hour. So just, you know, using multiple choice, hell yeah, it's got to be that. And I think I know the formula for that, but I just don't want to write anything down. All right, if one alpha equals two betas, and one beta equals three gammas. Uh, one beta. No, no. One alpha equals two betas. So one beta is equal to half an alpha. See, they're, they're, they're screwing you up on this one. Um, and then uh, one gamma is equal to a third of a beta. Anyway, how many alphas are equal to 36 gammas? So if you got 36, um, I was just going to make a, sounds like your parents got divorced a lot if you have 36 gammas. That would be a pretty good one. Uh, let's move on though. Holy Toledo. Um, okay, yeah. So, so if you have three gammas, you got one beta. But you, So you got to divide this by three, and then you'll get thir you get 12. Yeah, 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 you get 12. So you get 12 betas. Cool. Once you got 12 betas, uh, it takes two of those betas to make one alpha. You, you, you got 12, so you'll get six alphas. All right, moving on, moving on. Um, price of one pack. Oh, what, what, what are we buying? You know what I mean? The only thing I know that comes in packs, cigarettes, man. Okay, the chart above describes how many, oh, packs of gum. Heck yeah, this was like 85s. 1985 problem. Okay. Packs of gum company expects to sell a number of possible prices per pack. Oh, price per one pack. But if they, yeah, if they sell a, they sell a hell of a lot of them. Hell yeah, they'll give you a discount. Give you a discount. 
Which of the following equation best describes the relationship shown in the chart where N indicates the number of packs sold, P represents the price of dollars one pack? Oh, okay. Um, see. Uh. Number pack sold. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. you're gonna have five thousand. How do how, how how do we get this? How do we get this five thousand number? Well, you're gonna take the price of the pack, which is probably just a uh, uh one dollar. Yeah, this makes no sense. Because if you take the price of the pack as a dollar times two hundred, then you just, and, then, and then plus two fifty, yeah, that, that don't make no sense at all. Oh, okay. Which of the following equations best describes relationships shown in the chart where n indicates the number of packs sold? Uh, and P represents the price in dollars of one pack. Uh, okay. Shoot. Oh, I guess it, I guess it is this. Yeah, you got twenty thousand minus twenty five. So if it is a dollar, you're gonna sell five thousand. There you go. It's this one. Um. Oh 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 oh. No, it's this one. It's this one. Yep, yeah, there you go. Because you're going to start with negative 20,000 and then add 25,000. Oh, man, that was a tricky one. I did not know what they wanted. What is the average of the first 50 positive integers? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, this was so cool. This was in one of the books I did. You know what I mean? So if you add 1, 2, 3, if you add 1 through 10, uh, to find the average, you take 1 plus 10 and then divide by 2. Okay, so the average actually it isn't 5. It's 11 divided by 2, which is 5.5. .5. So this one is going to be 50 plus 1, 51. So it's going to be 25.5. There you go. And that, that is interesting. What is the average? You know, let's take, let's say, what's the average of 1? Of one and two, well, you add one. You know, it's one point five, right? You know, so one plus two is equal to three divided by two is one point five. That's where this one point five. So I always do a smaller problem first. What's the average of the first two positive integers? One and two. Well, it's gonna be one point five. Got it. Got it. Anyway, all right. So if a b is negative. Which of the following cannot be negative? So if AB is negative, A or B, one of them is negative. Which of the following, but just one of them, one of them, cannot be negative. This can be negative. This cannot be negative. All right, moving on, moving on. Which of the following equations best describe the curve shown in the graph? Well, it's like y is equal to x squared. It's pretty simple because you got one right here and then one. You got one, two, three, four. You know what I mean? Y is equal to x squared. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Oh, 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 yeah, and this is x. They didn't switch. They didn't flip flop these on you. You know what I mean? That would have been crazy. That, that would have been a good one if they switched those, but it's just a crappy picture. All right, in a certain set of numbers, the ratio of integers. To non-integers, oh, that's interesting, because you can have like 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 1. Well, that sounds like a 1 to 4. What percentage of the numbers in the set are integers? All right, 1 to 4. 1 out of 4. I think it's 25%, but I mean, like, you know what I mean? Uh, in a certain set of numbers, the ratio of integers uh, to non-integers, so you're going to have 0.25, that's 1, 0.5, that's 2, 0.75, that's 3, and then 1. That's your fourth integer, and, and it's a 1 to 4 ratio. Uh, one of them out of four of them, so 25% are integers. I, don't, I didn't like that one at all.
All right, what is the y-intercept of the line with the equation? Well, okay, you got to get y down to just, uh, anyway. So x is on the other side. Who cares what it is? But now, now you're, oh, 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 oh. we got to take this y on the other side. So you're going to have x minus 12 equals 4y. And then divide minus 12 by 4 is negative 3. So it goes through the negative 3. Hell yeah. All right, cups of lemonade sold. Day one. Hours spent, cups sold. Twelve hours? They're, they're doing a lemonade. What is, whoa, what is the median number of cups of lemonade sold per day? Um, what is the median number of cups of lemonade sold per day? Median. It's the middle number. So you have five here. It's the absolute Middle number, what's the medium number of cups of lemonade sold per day? Cups sold, so it's what, okay, this one's high, this one's low, this one's the next highest, this one's the next lowest, 20 is 20. Median is the middle number, but you got to have an odd number of numbers, you know what I mean? Okay, uh, cups, what is the average number of cups of lemonade sold, oh, per hour, per hour? So you, you're going to have a... Uh, Oh, damn. What is the average number of cups of lemonade sold per hour? I think you just add all the hours up, and you're going to have like a, a 9, 9, 9, 9, but minus 2. So you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You're going to have 40, You're going to have 46. 46 hours. Who? And uh, so cups per hour. Hopefully this is, hopefully it's just two, and, and you're going to have uh, 46, 45, you're going to have 92. All right, so you're going to have, yeah, there you go. So we're on the road for 92, so that's one right there, and then uh, two, six, seven, eight, nine, 92. So there you go. Booyah, saw that one coming a mile away. All right, cups of lemonade sold. The group's goal was to sell 115 cups of lemonade. Uh, what percent of this goal did the group achieve? Because they sold 92 from that last one. You know what I mean? I need to go back and check. But, uh, not, yeah, 92. 46 plus 46, 92. Uh, the group's goal is to sell 115 cups of lemonade. But they only sold 92. Let's say, let's say, uh, they, their goal is to sell 100 cups and they sold 92. Uh, they would have. They were 92% achieving their goal, so the number's got to be less than 92. So that's out. It's got to be 80. You know what I mean? It's pretty close to 92. You know what I mean? It ain't 60. They did pretty good. They did pretty good. They didn't do lousy. Okay, cool. Moving on. A wooden. See, I didn't like that last problem because they make you. They make you. Uh, you know. Well, what is it? I don't know, bow down to the multiple choice. You know what I mean? No one wants to bow down to the multiple choice. Holy, it sucks. All right, a wooden cube with volume... Oh, 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 so you got a cube. Okay, 64. And what do we know about cubes? 64. What's the cube root of 64? I don't know. Uh, isn't that just 4 times 4 is 16? That's a square. Times 4 is 64. So you get... Okay. It's sliced in half, so you got you have a four by four by four cube. It's sliced in half. Now you got a four by four by two. Uh, the two halves are then glued together to form a rectangular solid, which is not a cube. What is the surface area? Oh, the surface area. Oh, bummer, dude. Uh, so so you, you you had a yeah. So you got a four by four. Uh. By two, two deep. So now you got a four by eight. Um, yeah, four by eight is ninety six. Uh, see, I think this is totally wrong, though. Oh no, 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 no! A wooden cube with a volume of sixty four. So you had a four by four. Uh, by four, yeah, yeah, you, you you had to. Oh, the volume was sixty four. What's the surface area? Four times four is uh, four times four is sixteen. 
Holy, am I doing something wrong? A wooden key with a volume of 64. Uh... Yeah, yeah, so, uh, what's the dimensions? Well, yeah, they're 64 inches, you know what I mean? So you would, you would have 4 inch by 4 inch, that's 16, 16 square inches. And then, and then you'd have 4 of those. Um, cool. Yeah, 4 times 16 is 64. Okay, so you have 4 by 4. What's the surface area of that? Well, 4 by 4 times a, a cube of 6. So it's, it's, it's 4 by 4. 16 times 6, which is... It has more surface area. It actually... The, 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 the actual thing has more surface area. It's got six, 16 times 6. And I don't even know what that is. Well, it's another 32. So you'd have a 6... And in ninety six, yeah, it's, so yeah, that that would form, that would form a a, a surface area of ninety six, but you're going to uh, you're actually going to cut the surface area in half. So you're going to take that ninety six, and then you're just going to magically add another. Uh, well, well, let's say you magically add definitely a sixteen, because you're, you, and then you're gonna, then you're gonna glue two of the surfaces together, so you're gonna remove a, a sixteen. I mean, you're gonna add two sixteens, but then you're gonna remove a sixteen. So it's ninety six plus sixteen, uh, which is uh, six plus six is equal to twelve, um, and that's a hundred and twelve. Hundred and two plus six is this number right here. Anyway, I, I I didn't like that problem at all. It took me a while to actually get. Jake's average test score after two tests is 78. What average score must Jake score on the third, fourth, and fifth? Well, there's too many tests here. You know what I mean? I don't want to break out my pencil. Uh, to bring his average up to 87. That's all? He's not shooting for the moon on this one. Holy Toledo. Um, anyway. Uh, so after the first two tests... Well, yeah, this is interesting. How did we do the other one? How did we do the other one? Oh, I mean, if he gets another 78. Yep. And what av Oh, what's the average score? Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. You know what I mean? Ooh. 80s. How many points does he need to get up? He needs to get nine, nine more points. You know what I mean? Nine more increases. Um, wow, that's crazy. Uh, I'm just gonna say three, three, three per test. I don't think that's right, but I don't like this one at all. Um. Oh. Oh, never mind. Never mind. No, I, I see. He's yeah. He's got to get an average of more than eighty-seven. All right, what's more than eighty-seven? Yeah, he's, the average has to be more than more than eighty-seven to bump this up. Uh, but it's only I don't I think it only has to be three more than eighty-seven, and I don't know why. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna call it. I don't think it's 93, and I don't think it's three more than that. You know, it's four more. Uh, I, I don't like that one at all. Um, not without a pen and paper. Jack has bee blueberries. He uses 30% of the blueberries to make muffins. Okay. Uh, each, you know what I mean? Well, who cares? Just, just go, go, go hawk wild on those blueberries, Jack. Anyway, uh, each... Each of which requires M, M, M blueberries? Why is there two M's there? Okay. Uh, he uses the rest of the blueberries to make pies. Oh, okay. I see what you're doing. Uh, each pie, which requires P blueberries. 
That doesn't sound appetizing. Okay, which of the following describes the number of blueberry pies Jack can make? He uses 30% of the blueberries to make muffins. So he's going to have uh, 3 divided by 10 for the muffins. So he's going to have 7 divided by 10 for the blueberries. Or I mean for the pies. And so you're going to have 7 divided by 10 times M. What? Oh, yeah, total number of, number of blueberries, you know what I mean? Uh, how many pies can you make? Well, we, yeah, you're just going to take 7 over 10 times B. 7 over 10 times B, okay? And then you're going to divide by the number of P blueberries for these pies. So divide by P. 7, B, divide by 10, divide by P. There you go. Booyah. Let, let's, get, let's get out of here. If Q is not equal to 0, and Q is equal to Q to the negative 4, oh, I don't like these at all. What is the value of Q? Hey, these aren't bad. These aren't bad. Uh, so anyway, it's, uh, so, so th th this is just saying, take it downstairs. 1 divided by Q to the 4th. Well, let's say you had negative 1 here. Well, you'd take negative 1, square it. That would be a 1. Cube it. That would be negative 1. Uh, and then quad it or whatever to the 4. You're going to get 1 over 1. So negative 1 did not equal 1 over 1. Okay, this, is, this don't work. But if you take 1, and uh, this does work. Perfect. Got it. Got it. Let's get the hell out of here. Oh, I think I'll like this one. BC is equal to 4. Okay, good on you. CD, oh, a little bit more is equal to 5. AD is 12. Oh, well, what do you know? Because this, this is a, this is a, a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Uh, so if, if this is 9, if this is 3, 4, 5, th this is 9, this is 15 then. Okay, if point E lies somewhere between points B and C, what is one possible length of A to the E? Okay, so it's got to be more than, it's got to be less than 15. Okay, yeah. And uh, this one, uh, CD is 5. 5 squared. Oh, I see. 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is uh, 144. 144 plus 25. Uh, well, 145 plus 20 is 165. Plus 5 is 170. 145 plus 20 is 65, plus another 5 is 70, so it's uh, less than that, 169. Yeah, 169. Um, but it's got to lie between. So, what's, so if you, if you had, so it can't be 12. Because it's got to be, it's got to be, because th this, this is 12. Um, oh, duh. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's 14. Oh, this is stupid. Yeah, duh. I mean, this is 12. This is 15. There's only one in between 12 and 15. It is 14. Oh, that, that's insane. Okay. Anyway, uh, a circular frame with a width of 2 inches. With a circular frame? I don't get it. Okay, with the two okay, yeah, with the two inches surrounds a circular photo with a diameter of eight inches. Okay, I got it. Eight inches in diameter and then two inches deep. Assuming so you could fill it up maybe with water. That's not what they're doing, it's a photo. Assuming that the area of the frame does not overlap the area of the photo. 
Oh, okay. What is the area of the frame? A circular frame with a width of two in a width? What? A circular frame with a width? Is it just how thick it is? Or is only two inches in diameter? Surrounds a circular photo. Assuming that the area of the frame does not overlap the area of the photo. What is the area of the frame? I don't get this width though. I don't understand this one at all. They need a picture. I just, I just, I'll lose my brain trying to think about. It. I don't get a, a width. You know, you can't just use the term width. Uh, a circular frame with like a depth. Surrounds a circular photo. Okay, so you have a circular photo uh, with a diameter of eight inches. Assuming that the area of oh a width, I got it. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, duh. Okay, so it's like it's it's like a steel frame that's two inches in width. So the actual diameter is going to be two inches on this side. That's ten plus two inches on that side. That's twelve. Uh, um, what is the area of the frame? Yeah, the whole area of the whole darn thing, 12 pi. Oh, no, no, no. Area, that's circumference. Area is pi r squared. So you're going to have 8, 4, 5. So the radius is, radius is 5. Square it. Pi r squared. It's going to be 25 pi. Okay, woof. I didn't like that one at all. That one sucked width man okay if uh, x is equal to 4 okay so now you got 16 minus 2 that's that's 14 and then you got uh, 14 times 8 see i don't know what 14 times 8 is uh but i do know what 14 times 2 is that's 28 and uh, if I do know what 14 times 2 is, is 28, um, uh, what's, twice, what's twice a 28? Well, that's like 56. And then double that, 112. Let's get the hell out of here. Holy tolly. I probably made a mistake on that. I don't think I did, though. That was just mental math in your head. How many distinct prime factors did number 36 have? Two. You know, one. Two. It's got two, because one is a prime factor, and then two is. Does one count as a prime factor? See, what's, what's a prime factor? How many distinct prime factors? Is one not a factor? One is not a factor, is it? So I would just say it's got one, one distinct prime factor. It's just two, two. It's like it's like the you know turtles all the way down. It's just twos all the way down. I'll have to look up the definition of prime factor. Holy Toledo! At Joe's Steakhouse, the hourly wage for a chef is twenty percent greater than that of a dishwasher, and the hourly wage of a dishwasher is half. As much as the manager. If the manager's wage, whoa, this was not definitely 1985. Uh, if the manager's wage was 850 an hour, okay, so if the manager's was 850, the dishwasher is half. Okay, dishwasher gets 425. The chef is 20%. What's 10% more than 425? Well, sounds like you're going to get. Another 42 cents. You know what I mean? But 42.5 cents. So 42 plus 43. 85 cents. You're getting 85, 85 cents more 
than 425. Let's say it's 75. 425 goes up to, so it's $5.10. Woo! All right, and I think that was, I didn't even know what the question was, but we, we knew we knew what the question was. All right. A florist buys roses at 50 cents a piece, sells them at a dollar. Good job. If there are no other expenses, how many roses must be sold in order to make a profit of $300? Um, you know, you got to sell $600 worth of roses to make $300. And to sell six... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah. You need to sell $600 worth of roses. How many roses must be sold? They're a dollar a rose. Yeah, there you go. Okay, we got it. A certain pump can drain a big old tank in 15 minutes. At this rate, how many more minutes would it take to drain a full 600-gallon tank? Okay, so uh, can, can, can we figure out how many gallons in five minutes? Yes, because uh, divide 300 by five. Uh, 300 divided by 3 is 100. So you can do a 125-gallon tank in 5 minutes. If you can do a 125-gallon tank, um, then you could do a 250 in 10. And then you could do a uh, 250 times... Uh, you could do a... You know, work with me, work with me. So you could do a 250 in 10. So in 20 minutes, you could do a uh, 500, 20 minutes. And then in another 5 minutes, you could do a 625. So it's 24 minutes. Cool. Got it. Got em. If n is an even integer, which of the following must be an odd integer? And, and I'm, I'm ready to be so done. You know what I mean? We're going to get to question 45 in just uh, two more questions. If n, and my brain can't function. If n is an even integer, which of the following must be an odd integer? Uh, well... It's got to be a. Hmm. An odd integer? I think it's this one. This is the only one that makes sense. So if you have 1 and then 3 minus 2 is one so that works and it's the only one that probably works okay hell yeah cindy has a collection of 80 records if 40 percent of her see this is what you do like if you have a 40 percent tip just do a 10 percent tip that's eight bucks you know if you if, if your bill is 80 dollars and you need to figure out 25 percent you know what i mean well, what's 10 percent of 80 well eight bucks but then if i need uh 20 percent that's going to be 16. But what's five? So if it's eight bucks, what's five percent? Well, it's four bucks. So then if I do 16 plus four, that's 25 percent tip. You know what I mean? So then I get uh, 20. So you know what I mean? 25 percent tip. And that makes sense. It's 20. So, uh, so, uh, but if you have 40 percent, it's going to be eight times four is 32. 40 percent of a record and the rest. Okay. So, but this is the rest. How many blues records does she have? Okay, yeah, yeah, 40% of our, our jazz records, so they don't want that number. They want the opposite number of that. So we're going to go uh, 32, and but now we got to go 80 minus 30. They love doing this. You do 80 minus 30 is 50, but uh, subtract two more is 48. Hell yeah. All right, so we did 45 questions, and uh, we're just going to zip on out of here. Um, well, thanks for joining me. This was fun. 
And uh, let's see. Guess what? That's a video.